minutes of the development and programming meeting for Fox Television's new season. Meeting started at 8 a.m. Meeting was attended by Tina Rash, head of programming, Dallas Treasure, head of marketing, Janet Wu, head of talent relations, Cindy Fleer, head of comedy development, Peter Branson, head of drama, Thurman Stye, head of dramedies, Lisa Quinn, head of reality development and implementation, and Dr. Owen Stillhog, head of publicity. On speakerphone from his blimp hovering just above the building was Rupert Murdoch, owner of most everything. All were accompanied by various assistants who will be known simply by a number. 802, Nova locks on the deli tray discovered by Tina to be oily. 803, locks thrown out of window into parking lot B, meeting adjourned until new, less oily locks can be secured. 823, meeting reconvenes. It was discovered that Rupert Murdoch had been on the phone the whole time. He wakes up and continues his money breakfast. Tina's assistant number three reads from the overnights. America's nudist teens wins its time slot, retaining 86% of its lead-in, Monkey Rip, and has the biggest share of the most coveted demographic, the 15 to 65-year-old age group. Lisa Quinn buzzes for one of her assistants to run in and pat her on the back. 828. There is some concern that the Friday night lineup is susceptible to the latest CBS offering, CSI MD Law Town, the latest number one hybrid show. Lisa suggests Fox should counter with a show that has been in the pipes for a while now, a reality game show called Muslim Hunt. The show is being developed with the cooperation of the new public broadcasting system, and everyone is really behind it. Mysteriously, she pauses to wink here. Dallas says that he has some great ideas for this one. He suggests that there could be a tie-in with American Idol or any of the franchise's spin-offs, mentioning Algerian Idol several times and bringing up his desire to get our hooks into the new Iraq with Iraqi Idol. He notes that the number one show in Iraq is Blowout. Tina interrupts Dallas to take a call from assistant number three, who is seated three chairs away to her left. The assistant informs Tina that her meeting with Doug Van Ellen, her lifestyle consultant, about a new iPod playlist that he has designed for her has been pushed back till noon. 8.32. Dr. Stillhog brings up a problem he is having with some of the cast of Donovan's Wharf. He has tried unsuccessfully to get both the teenage lead actors, Devlin Reese and Strawberry Williams, to participate in an online charity event to raise awareness for a fake disease which is currently being configured based on polling the show's demographic. Dr. Stillhog is asked what his course of action has been. He says that he promised them the cover of Paper Magazine, appearances on The Tonight Show, as well as bumping up the gift bag with more secret swag from the Fox Swag Vaults in Yucca Valley. The reason they are hesitant to participate is that both of them get grossed out by diseased people. Tina asked what kind of punitive measures have been threatened, to which Dr. Stillhog replied that he had threatened a ban on scented candles or small dogs in the trailers. There was general silence until Rupert spoke up. It's Rupert, just like the voice of God, hmm? Everyone laughed at this for over nine minutes. 841. After the fake laughing died down, Rupert spoke up again. These two kids, Devlin and Strawberry, kill them, chop up their bodies, feed them to the rest of the cast. Tina argued that when that tack was taken with Hunter Rain from So You Think You're So Smart, it backfired and there was a crew mutiny. Bumblefuck, said Rupert. That was a reality show about New York waiters being switched with retarded summer camp kids. This is different. I was going to say that too, Mr. Murdoch, Lisa Quinn said. The issue was decided that they would base a reality show on which actor to kill and eat. 847. Lisa Quinn pitches a new show. She said that she wanted to pitch a show based on the current success of Martha Stewart's ability to convince people to look up to her, although she had gotten caught and convicted of a crime in which she was, in part, lying to the feds. The show would be a reality show featuring a recently convicted celebrity wherein cameras would follow every moment of the trial and jail time. Who's the celebrity going to be, was asked by several people. Lisa Quinn. Mm, how about Megan Nero? She's the lady from Court TV who got caught shoplifting upskirt videos from a store in Van Nuys. Rupert again. Bloody Bushburys. Let's do one better. Let's frame a celebrity with a crime, and then we'll be there from the very beginning. America will go apeshit for that. Everyone was enthusiastic about this, and after debating various celebrities and crimes, it was decided that Katie Couric would be framed for selling nuclear secrets to China, as well as child endangerment and kidnapping, which would be accomplished by burying alive her son Vaughn in a six-by-six-square-foot pit in the back of her house. Get her done, Rupert said, imitating his favorite comedian. At 9.02, assistant number two, me, received a call that Andy Richter was downstairs and very upset, arguing with the security guard. 
It seemed that someone had thrown a bunch of locks all over the seat of his open convertible. Everyone laughed, and Tina opened the window and yelled down to Andy, Hey, Richter, did you see the overnights for your show? She then started throwing all the food out the window into Andy's car. Andy started to half laugh. Then Rupert told the driver of his blimp to position it over Andy's car. As it did, the bottom hatch opened up, and Rupert's bare ass was soon poking out. As Rupert started relieving himself, and you could hear the grunting over the speakerphone, he said, thank you, and left. Meeting adjourned. The following shows were discussed and are now being produced for Fox's reality channel. America's least favorite horse. Infant swap, where two infants from two different families are swapped for the first five years of life. Line weight. I can make it cheaper, wherein contractors bid on public housing contracts. So, you think you can projectile vomit? Now that's what I call AIDS. America's next top bottom. That would be for the Logo Channel. What time is it? Judge Baby, are you smarter than an elderly retarded chicken? Last blogger standing. You asked for it, wherein lawyers from one of America's top law firms are covered in caramel and honey and airdropped into the Amazon rainforest. Making the cut a reality show about moils. What the hell? Ben Stiller stars as the unfortunately but comically named Lenny Shittingsley, the neurotic but likable put-upon schnook who gets stuck with the unfortunate task of transporting his wife's dog, who can't stop farting, to the MTV Movie Awards. The MTV Movie Awards will be played by Will Smith in this adaptation of the popular comic book character. Who wants to marry my midget? That got a green light, and it will follow exploiting gullible teens at 8, and how low will we go? 8.30 on Tuesday nights. Uh -huh.